Today, I'm going to be answering your photography questions. Ask and you shall receive. How can I find my style in photography? How can I get to shoot magazine editorials? I wish in the beginning pa lang, I knew. Para pinag-iintan ako ng mga older photographers. Mga nagdadabog sa set. Go walk out, ganyan. How to take a real good pic by using only your phone. What studio lights would you recommend for photographers that are starting to build a studio? This is a really, really good question. Hello na everyone! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay, so before I start, next week meron ng Musings episode. I'm so sorry, wala masyadong BTS. This year, kasi nga, uh, halos lahat ng shoots na ginagawa ko, puro commercial shoot. Hindi siya masyadong creative and kailangan pa ng mga like approval from, of course, may mga clients and everyone. So hindi ko siya ideally bine BTS. Musings episode talagang special talaga siya na sinashoot for the YouTube channel and next week meron na naman tayong isa pang Musings episode. Abangan niyo na lang kung sino 'yon. So this week we will be doing a Q&A video na puro photography questions. For those of you who just tuned in, wow, chilling. I am BJ Pascual and I am a photographer, a professional photographer for 12 years now in the Philippines. Today I'm going to be answering your photography questions that I asked on Instagram and sobrang dami talagang questions. We had to do a cut off ng oras kasi so before we begin, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get updated on my next videos. Next week, musings ha? So see you guys there. And ayan, let's begin. From Venny, this is Ven. What's your first camera? Actually, naalala ko lang to recently. My very, very first camera that I regularly use. Hindi talaga siya bigay sa akin, kinuha ko lang siya sa lolo ko. Instamatic film camera, Olympus MJU2. When Mike and I did a project for Adora, for Wonder Journal, nagpadala sila sa amin ng film camera with three rolls of film. Pagkita ko, sabi ko, oh my god, ganito yung first ko na camera. Apparently, uso na pala siya ngayon. Medyo mahal na siya nung tinignan ko sa eBay, like mga $200. It's an old Instamatic, like wala siyang settings or anything. Dinadala ko siya sa school, nagpipicture ako ng mga classmates ko, ganyan. And after school, punta kami sa bahay, tapos tinatry namin mag-photoshoot gamit yung ano, bedsheet ko, ginagawa namin background, ganun. Yung bedside lamp ko, nakulay dilaw yung ilaw, yun yung ginagamit namin light, tapos patakpan ko yung flash, hindi siya nag-work, magiging slow lang yung shot niya pag tinakpan mo yung, yung sensor niya, tsaka yung flash. DSLR camera, uh, binili naman sa akin ng lolo ko. Nikon D40. Medyo matagal ko siyang ginamit. Yun yung entry level ng Nikon before. As in like, parang I think 12 megapixels lang siya. Pinakamurang DSLR dati ng Nikon. And sobrang tumagal siya sa akin. I think 5 years ko rin ginamit yun. And nakapag-billboard pa yun, in fairness, kahit 12 megapixels. So, since malala yung billboards, hindi siya masyadong nagmamatter. Basta sharp yung images. So yung 12 megapixels kaya na yung mag-billboard. From Lara Moss. When you were starting out, how did you reach out to people to collab with you with limited budget? So nung nagsastart pa lang ako na maging fashion photographer. May mga friends ako dati na mga starting out lang din na mga designer since um, pare-pareho kami nang sa start out pa lang. Tej Kagalawan, sila Martin Bautista. Like si Martin naman, na-meet ko siya online lang kasi mga fans kami ni Christina Aguilera before. When I was starting out sa fashion photography, yung name ni Martin matunog na siya, like na-feature na siya sa mga preview ganyan, mga random like connections lang. Wala walang bayad yung mga yon, parang fun shoots lang kami with um, our friends as models, ganyan. Doon din na parang nabibuild yung parang portfolio, ganyan. Parang whatever resources you have around you. Like ako, nung before pa ako naging um, fashion photographer, yung pinag-practice ko, syempre, like yung mga friends ko na si Princess, si Barretz, yung production designer, tsaka si Adel, isa sa mga best friends ko from, uh, from way, way back. Kinushoot ko lang sila dun sa, ano, sa condo ko, ganyan, dun sa white wall. You just have to make the most of what you have around you. 
uh, hindi naman kailangan sobrang bongga agad eh. Since magsa-start ka pa lang, it's really good to just keep shooting and to practice para lang ma-improve yung skill and masanay ka lang to shoot with people, ganyan. When should you shoot for free? Ayun, kaka-mention ko lang if may relationship na kayo no, nung makaka-work mo that you trust each other and comfortable kayo na may magagawa kayong something good kahit free lang siya. Malalaman mo naman kung like Siyempre, ina-abuse ka na kung halimbawa, big company siya, tas libre siya papashoot sa'yo. Dapat mutually beneficial siya for the both of you. Starting pa lang na designer, siyempre mga starting designers, wala pa rin silang budget to hire. You can um, ask them if you could collaborate with them, use their clothes. In the end, kasi siyempre, if magsustart kayo sabay, parang you never know kung sabay din ba yung pag-angat ng career niyo or something. Yung pinaka-okay na advice is, don't be afraid to ask people to collaborate kasi you never know. Huwag kayo mahihiya. Kasi ako dati mahihiyain ako eh. Kasi so, yun yung natutunan ko in life. Ask and you shall receive. Kahit minsan parang feeling nyo nahihiya kayo. Just do it. How can I find my style in photography? Is there any advice you can give for me? This is from official Kyle. This is a very long process. Kahit ako eh, like sobrang habang proseso niya. And I think my style is still evolving. Although I always say na parang your vision is your ammunition. But syempre mahirap din hanapin yung, yung vision mo talaga. Just keep shooting. When you keep shooting, dun mo malalaman kung ano yung gusto mo. Halimbawa your last 10 shoots. Marirealize mo dyan eh kung ano yung gusto mo and what you do well. Well, kailangan mo siyang paghaluin eh, na parang whatever sparks joy <laughs> pag nakikita mo sa photos, yung parang yung sobrang type na type mo talaga. You can go with that, but there's nothing wrong also with exploring other things. In exploring, like trying out different things, dun mo rin malalaman kasi kung ano yung mas suwak sa panlasa mo. Also, when you're starting out, don't be pressured to have like set specific style right away. Especially kung sobrang beginner ka pa lang. Kasi kailangan mo muna itry yung iba-ibang things. It's really different for everyone. Be open, keep practicing. Yun talaga yun eh. When you keep shooting, dun mo mahahasa yung skills mo and dun mo rin malalaman kung ano yung type mo talaga sa photos. Yung photos mo, it's yours eh. Parang, it's your vision, di ba? What is the one thing you wish you knew when you started taking photos? The one thing, parang gusto kong malaman lahat. <laughs> joke. In relation to the last question, I wish in the beginning pa lang, I knew I had to work on my vision. Kasi, nung time na nag-start ako, I knew nothing about art, about creativity, mga ganyan. I really didn't grow up in like a, a creative family or a creative environment. So before, when I was starting out, I just did everything. Time na yun kasi, like, if you wanna be a photographer here in the Philippines at least, you have to be able to do a lot of things. Whatever the magazine or the client asks you to do, you have to be able to do it. Magandang learning experience din yun for me kasi now, whenever I do commercial shoots, pag commercial shoots talaga, your client will dictate talaga, wala kang masasabi. I know how to work also with commercial clients aside from editorial client. I guess nag-improve na rin naman yung, yung ways dito sa Pilipinas ngayon. And makikita naman yan dun sa mga, like, yung mga talents na nagsusulputan in the past like what, five years, mas my distinct vision na agad sila. They're just like a few years into the business para makikita mo na agad yung specific style nila. I wish I knew that I was, nung starting pa lang ako, that I was working towards a vision. For those na gusto mag-start ng photography business, how much yung range ng budget needed? Naku, ngayon hindi ko alam, but I'm sure mas mura na ngayon. When I started, I think a Nikon D40 was around like 35,000. And parang for me ang mahal na nun. First set of lights na actually binili namin as a group of friends. If you watched my um, very, very first episode, 12,000 pesos yun. Alala ko, isang buong set na yun. Dalawang ilaw, isang softbox, isang umbrella, tas may mga gels na siya. And kompleto siya, may mga stands, ganyan. And it was only 12,000 pesos. I guess 50,000 nung time na yun. Pwede ka na mag-start. And ngayon, parang I think technology has improved a lot and mas mura na ngayon lahat. Especially with the advent of mirrorless cameras, yung mga inter interchangeable lenses, ganyan, na mga mirrorless cameras. Mas maganda pa yung magiging output nyo kaysa nung nag-start ako, di ba? Really depends on how much you're willing to spend. But, sinasabi ko talaga, hindi talaga nagmamatter 
so much yung equipment. It's really your eye that's gonna make the difference dun sa photos mo. Basta alam mo lang yung basics ng photography, yung photos mo are sharp. Well, depende sa'yo. Kung gusto mo ng blurred bird na photos, okay lang din kung yun yung style mo. Um, basta solid yung, yung gusto mo mangyari dun sa photos mo. Makikita ng tao yung vision mo dun sa picture na yun. How to start your portfolio. What are the things to consider? Collaborate with different people. Ngayon, I think mas madali kasi may social media na sa Instagram. Makikita mo agad yung work nila. Mayroon mo lang silang i-DM kung gusto mo mag-collaborate. Mag and ang dami-dami ngayon mga, mga models sa Instagram. You can really find like gems ng mga models sa Instagram. Minsan ka pala nyo lang yung mukha nyo sa pag-message ng mga tao. And I think dun sa episode din ni LG, sinabi rin niya na dati, ang ginawa niya, in niya lahat ng mga tao na mga industry people sa multiply. <laughs> and then now, dami na. May TikTok, may Instagram, may Twitter, ganyan. So the possibilities are endless talaga to collaborate. The best investment you've made as a beginner? I guess my camera. <laughs> Sobrang nasulit ko siya na ROI ko talaga siya. Ilang years ko siyang ginamit. That first set of lights din. Sobrang nasulit ko rin talaga. The relationships I kept, especially yung mga designers na nagsastart pa lang ng time na yun. And the people I worked with when I was starting out. I think it's very important to maintain like great working relationships. Kasi ang dami sa inyo ng mga super bagets pa. Not a lot of people know this but parang pinag-iitan ako ng mga older photographers than me. Especially when I was starting out, hindi ko siya nagegets ng time na yon. But now I really get it, cause nung like nung 90s, ang uso dante is like even with artista sa ah, yung nagdidiba na yung palaging galit sa set, ganyan, bawal maingay, blah blah blah. Uso kasi yung masungit ng 90s and parang I think yung plastic culture uso din ng time na yon. I think a lot of um, the big names from that era parang naging ganon yung mindset nila, which was fine, kasi yun naman talaga yung kalakaran that time. The generation before me parang meron pang konting ganun. Yung starting na nung generation ko or yung generation after me na parang yun talaga uso yung ganun. Yung mga nagdadabog sa set, yung mga nagwa-walk out, ganyan. There's a lot to be said about being nice because I think you get a lot more work done when you're nice to people. Also, when we have maintaining great working relationships with everyone, in the end, hindi naman nagmamatter yung pagdidiba mo dun sa set. Ang nagmamatter is work na napaproduce mo. Being nice, has a lot to do with like a great working environment, de ba? Hindi lang naman sa photo shoots yan. Be nice. <laughs> How to take a real good pic by using only your phone? Sobrang ganda na ng mga phones ngayon. What you see is what you get, na like kung ano yung makita mo sa screen yun na yung picture eh. so may raw files na like like the Samsung S21 Ultra has a pro mode actually halos lahat ng phones naman meron na dito pa lang balin mo nang aralin yung mga aperture shutter speed ISO kasi mga guys mo na agad siya while you're tinkering with it na adjust na agad siya dito sa phones also consider kung saan nagagaling yung light source halimbawa may cloudy or direct sunlight ba siya walang clouds or nasa shade ka ba ganyan yung mga ganung bagay consider mo watch how sunlight changes Depende kung nasaan ka, kung saan ka nakaharap, kung may nakaharang ba sa kanyang puno, kung may nakaharang na clouds, kung may nakaharang na screen, ganyan. Pag medyo na-figure out mo na kung ano yung mas nakaganda or mas gusto mo, mas ma-maximize mo yung phone mo. It's also good, I think, to learn about focal lengths. Meron akong mini-tutorial niyan dun sa isa kong video. So, i-link na lang yan dito. So, kung medyo alam niyo na yung mga ganun, andali na lang gamitin ng phone. Kasi may gets niyo na kung ano yung yung lalabas dun sa phone nyo. And makikita nyo naman eh. Basta, sharp yung image nyo, it's gonna look really, really good. Where do you send your cameras for sensor cleaning? Oh my God, ayan, sakto. Papasensor cleaning ako dapat nung Saturday. Sarado pala siya. Columbia Photo talaga ako nagpapasensor cleaning. Sa Cubao siya. Dun ko talaga siya pinapadala always. What's the best app to edit photos for beginners? I think same lang naman sa mga pro. Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. I still use both, but yung tethering, ang ginagamit ko is Capture One. Yung workflow ko is Capture One to tether photos pag nagsushoot, yung para direct na dito. Initial color grading doon na. So export, PSD, more TIFF, depende sa mood. And then, i-retouch na siya sa Photoshop and then doon na mag-select-select ng specific. Like, nabawa skin lang yung iibahin yung kulay dun na ginagawa sa Photoshop. Of course, yung retouching, mga blemishes, or anything na gustong ayusin. After i-save sa Photoshop, nagpa-final, like, minor edits lang ako. And yung grain. 
sa Lightroom, cropping then sa Lightroom and export. So yun, I would say Photoshop and Lightroom for beginners. Next, what is your thought process when color grading? your pictures. Basta bagay dun sa feed ko. Charing. Before even shooting, meron akong naiisip na kung ano yung mood ng photos. And I also have a retoucher who's been with me for like ilang years na. Medyo kilala kilala na niya ako. Before kasi ako pa yung nag-grade ng photos, siya lang yung nag-retouch. Like yung mga linis-linis kasi yun yung matrabaho. Now, I let her grade also the images and bibigyan ko lang siya ng reference kung ano yung gusto kong colors and then send niya sa akin, sabihin ko kung ano yung comments ko, ganyan. Minsan mag-e-edit ako on my own and then send ko sa kanya. I think a lot of people don't know na full-time photographer talaga ako, guys. <laughs> like, itong YouTube parang side lang talaga to. And hindi ko talaga kayang i-edit lahat ng photos. So, kailangan talaga mag-delegate. Grace does most of my editing for me. Before even shooting, parang may idea na ako kung ano yung gusto kong mangyari sa photos. After, parang minsan may mga tweaks nila. Of course, hindi naman talagang palaging kung ano yung nasa isip mo yung talaga yung lalabas, di ba, sa shoots. And minsan, depende pa dun sa mga color ng clothes na, lang, na dumating, ganyan. Basta everything has to work together seamlessly. Like the clothes, the outfit, the makeup, the setting with the color grading because your color grading can make or break your images. Just curious on how you make your photos look very smooth and very clear. Thank you from Mick M. Mick. Make sure your photos are in focus. <laughs> that has to do a lot with the lenses also. Kasi prime lenses, yung mga lenses ng hindi na zoom, photos from taken with those lenses are sharper than yung mga zoom lenses. I always say, just make sure your photos are in focus. Because ako rin naman eh, like, minsan pag nag-aaliw na ako sa shoot, of course, may mga ibang photos talaga na hindi magiging sharp, especially kung sobrang shallow nung, um, nung aperture mo, di ba? Tendency talaga na mag-blur yung ibang part. Sony has like yung auto eye focus, so online siya mag-focus sa eyes. You get to focus more on like the composition and everything, especially when the subject is moving. Smooth, um, I think that has a lot to do with the lighting because a lot of people always say na parang Photoshop, Photoshop, ganyan, kasi parang sobrang ganda nung yung skin, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, it's really the light. I think when you see some of my um, behind the scenes videos, yung, yung kay Ray, yung nagugulat siya na parang, oh my god, ganoon na pala talaga yung itsura niya sa pagka-photo pa lang. Kasi syempre, it's a combination of lighting and makeup din. People have this idea na pag sobrang glossy ng picture, sobrang edited siya, it really depends on the lighting. May mga lighting na mas glossy, may mga lighting na mas matte and mas raw yung dating. Next question, what studio lights would you recommend for photographers that are starting to build a studio? Depende talaga sa needs mo, but I think around four strobes would be useful for general use. An octa na medium size. Soft boxes, so a pair of soft boxes, a pair of strip boxes, a pair of yung convertible na shoot through and reflective umbrellas na medyo yung malilit parang gantong kalake. A beauty dish. It would be parang mas efficient if you rent out equipment first and then kung ano yung mga kasi yung mga modifiers iba iba yung effects niya and depende rin sa taste mo kung ano yung gusto mo so it will be helpful if you rent first and then kung ano yung mas na-attract ka kung ano yung mas nagagamit yun yung bilhin mo so para mas makatipid and mas economical when shooting outdoors what are you usually using to modify the light source and how depende sa time of shooting yung mga high noon yung sun I usually use like a black velvet tela to block the light sa taas. Pwede rin like a diffuser. Meron akong foldable na 4x4 na diffuser. I have four of those. I use them to diffuse and minsan to reflect na rin. Reflectors depende sa effect na gusto mo rin. Like um, if you want like a softer bounce, white lang. You want like a mas may glow. Either silver or gold. Depends sa skin tone ng model mo. Pag sunset, usually reflector na lang. Minsan wala na nga eh. Especially pag sa mga beach. As much as possible, I like natural light talaga. It's really the best light. Iba yung quality ng sunlight talaga. How do you decide the right picture for a magazine cover? Either the editor-in-chief, the art director, or whoever their boss is. Sa Instagram ko, marami akong pinopost doon na mga yung covers that didn't make it. Usually, yung mga gusto kong covers, usually hindi yung nakakover. But recently, anong mas digital na, mas relax na sila sa pag-decide. I usually um, get to suggest naman which cover. Actually, even before naman, I can suggest, but hindi rin nasusunod yung suggestions ko. 
<laughs> Paano niyo na-handle yung attitude na model? I guess hindi mo dapat siya sabayan ng attitude. If may pinagdadaanan sila or what, sakyan mo na lang. Do your best for the shoot. Kung paano sila makipag-cooperate sa'yo, it really depends on the situation. But yun yung goal is for them to co cooperate with you. Whether it be like gaining their trust um, or collaborating with them, having an open conversation. Minsan kasi parang nababadrip sila kasi parang hindi maganda yung sa tingin nila yung lumalabas na photos and feel free to ask them kung ano, ano ba yung gusto nila. Sometimes that can also help ease the tension. Kasi sa, syempre yung photoshoots is always a collaborative effort. Open communication is key. How can I get to shoot magazine editorials? Nung time ko, may mga email dun sa magazines, di ba? Um, Tapos i-email ko yung portfolio ko, ganyan. The Philippines, very small naman yung industry. Parang if you do a great job for one magazine, parang magkakilala yung mga editors niyan, so marirecommend ka dun sa next, ganyan. And now, I think it's so much easier kasi may Instagram niya na you can just DM the magazine's account, ganyan. Kung yung portfolio mo is your Instagram na rin eh, so that makes it a lot easier for them to acknowledge your work, di ba? Do you give raw photos to your clients? From Nicole Joy Caballero. For mga editorials, no, usually no. For commercial work, parang very Philippine-specific tong ganitong kalakaran. Kasi sa Philippines, when they get you for a commercial job, I mean, yes, medyo malaki yung bayad, but essentially, they're doing a buyout. Lahat ng raw photos binibigay. Especially for like, consumer brands, like yung mga Unilever, ganyan. And then the agency just does the edits for you. So essentially, you're paid to be there to shoot lang talaga. Yung concept brief will come from the agency, um, and they will also edit. Actually, most of the time, kasama naman sa rate ko yung ano eh, pag edit ng photos. But the agencies prefer that they edit the photos because they have their own schedule, I think. They also get paid more by the client if they edit the photos. Mostly, I think it's about schedule. Like, may schedule sila ng deadlines and everything that it will take more time if papasa pa nila sa akin, papasa ko sa nila, papasa sa client, ganyan. But sa Philippines lang yun, because here, more is more talaga yung <laughs> gusto nila. Pag shoot kami ng commercial jobs, like, especially for library photos, like, they make, like, the artists do 10 million poses. May hawak na phone, may hawak na laptop, um, nagtatext, tumatawag, ganyan, left, right, pointing up, pointing down, ganyan. And parang most of the time, I never really see those pictures being used. I'm just there to shoot naman talaga. I'm paid to do the job, so I just do it. But yeah, for commercial shoots, yes. Sana nga mabago na yung ganung system. Eh. Kasi like, ideally, um, sa ibang bansa, you get paid per layout talaga, eh, diba? So sa isang layout na yun, you give them like a set of images lang, na retouch na, na final na. And yun na yun, you focus on like a few really good images instead of making like a hundred really okay whatever images, diba? Given the pandemic and yung social media also, I don't think it will happen since kailangan ngayon mas marami talagang photos. For mga magazines, mga creative shoots, I never, never give out, especially recently raw photos. And even before, I would only give out raw photos to preview when Vince Uy was still there. Because I really trust Vince with, like, my photos. Number one, personal criteria for a good picture. The first thing I look at is always the face. In the past few years, I consider ko na yung impact ng buong image. Everything works together. Styling the hair, the makeup, the pose, the backdrop, the lighting should all work together. When you see photos na parang hindi siya nag-make sense in a good way. Parang minsan kasi meron din naman mga photos na parang sobrang gulo niya but like it's just so good. Depende talaga siya sa kung nagets ko ba yung reference or just visually everything just works. Very me talaga na face talaga yung importance sa photo. Because no matter how good your composition, your lighting, whatever is, if the face does not work with the rest of the image, wala na siya. For me lang naman yun. And I always say that naman. Any particular image that got you excited recently? Something you or anyone else took? From Regine David. Oh my god, my fave. Regine David. Okay, kayo nag-shoot ng mga Calvin Klein photos ko sa Japan. One of my favorite, favorite Filipino photographers in the world. Meron siya ngayong zine that you can buy from Bad Student Press. I'll just link it down below. I may or may not be in this zine. So, kung bumili kayo, malalaman nyo kung nandun ako. Super galing niya, especially with boys. And, I don't know, there's just something very raw. Yung photos niya, 
evoke so much emotion. So anyway, I love Regine's photos. So buy her zine. Pag, pero pag nakita niya ako dun sa magazine, dun sa zine niya, if nandun nga ako, huwag niyo i-post yung photo. Kailangan niyo makakita lang yung bibili. <laughs> anyway, back to Regine's question. Recently reposted yung cover ni Naomi Campbell na kanood siya sa beach wearing like a bikini bottom and a really really huge feather headpiece that looks like yung lumang Marc Jacobs for Louis Vuitton na collection. Or was it a Marc Jacobs collection? Basta may malaking feather na black na headpiece. It came out a few days ago and I reposted it on stories because I thought it was so good. Grabe, sobrang walang kupas talaga siya. And also, another image that got me really, really excited recently. Naomi Campbell then na um, cover for Vogue US by Ethan James Green. Naka cover lahat except her face. Like the silver, really long silver gown. Na para naka platform siya sa loob, so she looked extra extra long. And daming magandang Naomi moments recently, yeah. I think even more than her supermodel era days. Those two images, ngayon ko lang na isip, um, really stuck to me recently, and I was super in awe of them. And also, when did I shot? I shot something recently, pero sa April pa siya lalabas with the Gibbs sisters. Super excited for that. So abangan niyo yun. Of course, there will be a vlog. So next question is from Sarah Erasmo, my editor. So, she nag edit ng video na to. So, ano ang feels mo about referencing things that themselves are references to something else? Do you think that makes work weaker or less substantial or ganun lang talaga ang natural progression ng mga bagay in terms of aesthetic and trends? Haha, <laughs> random na isip ko lang. Kasi mahilig ako mag-Pinterest, ganyan. This is a really, really good question, actually. Sa vlogs ko, like, especially the behind-the-scenes vlogs, like yung mga Missing's episodes, I usually reveal my references in the beginning of the video, di ba? Dito sa Pilipinas kasi, nung nagsisimula pa lang ako back in 2008, 2007, ang uso talaga natin is yung word na peg. Dito lang sa Pilipinas, ginagamit yan. As in, like, if you work in another country, hindi nila alam yun in the context of a, a photo shoot. As in, literally, meron, like, mga photos from other magazines. Tapos gagayahin mo lang talaga siya. When the, my career progressed, ganyan, naging uso na yung social media and everything, parang mas naging aware na rin yung industry na hindi dapat ganun. There should be like a more artistic approach to referencing and I don't think there's anything wrong with referencing. This is a really good book to to read. Feel Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. For any creative, this is a really good read. Palagi natin naririnig na nothing is original, di ba? Siyempre nagawa na lahat, di ba? The writer Jonathan Leth um, has said that when people call something original, 9 out of 10 times, they just don't know the references or the original sources involved. What a good artist understands is that nothing comes from nowhere. All creative work builds on what came before, and nothing is completely original. Yung referencing is parang taking many things from before, and then combining it into something that works, that's hopefully, of course, fresh and new. Parang remix, ganyan. For me, yung important is yung context nung pagre-reference mo. Kung bagay ba siya dun sa gagawin mo. Wala naman talagang rules. I think referencing is, of course, contextual siya. Depende. Like, international photographers like Merton Marcos, they reference heavily talaga. Minsan talagang garing gaya talaga yung images from before. There was a Kristen Stewart cover for... W Magazine na naka big hair siya like this frosted pink lips super direct reference siya sa photo ni Priscilla Presley from the 60s alam kong reference siya as in direct reference siya I really think that's a re still a really really powerful image kasi nung time na yun bagay na bagay siya Kay Kristen Stewart. It was such a transformation. Kasi parang Kristen Stewart lagi siyang boyish, and then they turned her into something super glam. Yun yung parang li literally reference ng siya na isa lang, but it really worked. Another shoot with Taraji P. Henson na literally reference from photo ni Diana Ross. Even the pose, sobrang same talaga. But I think it was effective because sobrang bagay niya kay Taraji P. Henson. In recent times naman, one of the hottest photographers now, <laughs> biglang nawala sa isip, kutum na ata ako. Okay. <laughs> si Hugo Comte. By the way, si Hugo Comte yung gumawa ng album cover ni Dua Lipa. His work is heavily, heavily, heavily inspired by mga very, very late 90s, early 2000s, mga early aughts work nila Steven Meisel, uh, Vincent Peters, and sometimes yung references niya is like really like the same poses, um, almost the same sets, but even then, na parang sobrang direct ng reference niya. Ganda pa, I mean, for me, saktong timing, 
and bagay siya doon sa mga shoots na ginagawa niya. He made that style from that era his own but now. Yung way nila ng pag-reference is of course different from how I reference because I reference parang iba-ibang things and combine it to what. Even then, yung sa pag-reference nila, there's nothing wrong with um, referencing stuff from the past. I don't think it dilutes the idea. Just depends on how you translate the idea into something new and fresh. End of the time. I think timing din eh. So it's a lot of different Layers. Babalik ako dito sa ano sa um, still like an artist. May table dito eh. There's good theft and bad theft. Good theft. Ibig sabi nito referencing. Palitan na natin para hindi masadong dakakan yung term. Good referencing is to study. So ibig sabi nara lemo ko ano yung reference mo. Bad theft is to skim. Alam mo yung mag search search ka lang mo. Alam mo yung asin like nasa pinterest ka lang tos like 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 lahat ganyan. At the very least, you should know which. Ano yung reference mo? Parang ako ganon ako nagsa start usually. Like I would have like a reference in mind. Dun kasi simulan. Like Google ko siya kung wala sa Google um, o kung saan man. Like picture ko siya. Lalagay ko sa Pinterest kasi dun ako gumagawa ng boards sa Pinterest. So and then I would build from those references na naisip ko. And yung mga reference na naisip ko yung magsistick naman talaga sa iyo yung what attracts you eh. Um, kung ano talaga yung deep inside, yun talagang nagre-resonate sa'yo. Kasi hindi mo siya maaalala talaga kung hindi naman nagre-resonate sa'yo yun eh. Good referencing is to steal from many. Bad referencing is to steal from one. So ito, ito ginagawa ko ito palagi. Like, I um, reference a lot of different things and combine it into one, di ba? So ayun, hopefully, uh, you will create something fresh, di ba? But then, hopefully kasi, minsan, hindi natin masasabi, may... Alam mo, yung sinasabi nilang zeitgeist, minsan nagkakataon talaga na marami kayong creatives na yun yung ni-reference, di ba? And nagkasabay-sabay. Last year, halos sa itong uh, works ko, painterly, with the canvas backdrops, ganyan. Uh, I've always been attracted to it from way, way back. But uh, parang binalik ko siya last year. And true enough, like like ngayon, lumabas yung yung Dior na campaign na sobrang ganda. Parang mga paintings din sila, di ba? It doesn't necessarily mean na ginaya ko sila. I mean, alam mo yun, parang marami na ibang gumagawa niyan eh. Depende talaga if of the time siya, magkakasabay-sabay din, di ba? Good theft is to, is to transform and bad theft is to imitate. So, um... Ito yung sinasabi ko na wala kasi talagang rules. Kahit sinasabi dito na bad, bad yan na ganyan. Examples ko kanyang na like sila Steven Maitel or sila Hugo, Hugo Comte. As in literally, yung reference nila is like sobrang same talaga nung before. But they turned it into something fresh and new pa rin naman. Yun, in the end, it's really contextual. Um, if it works, it's gonna work. Ang masama lang talaga, I think, is to... Halimbawa, may lumabas na shoot si ganyan recently, a few months ago. Tapos gagayahin mo lang kasi wala, type mo lang yung picture na yun. Yun yung, I think, hindi magandang way of referencing. Kasi parang literally ginaya mo lang yung ginawa ng isang person like a few months ago. True naman yung sinabi niya na parang ganun talaga yung natural progression na. Everything has been done, so it's up to us now to take from the past created into something hopefully new and fresh nga. Um, 90s, fresh off the runway to paint like photos last 2020. What's next for BJ's palette? Okay, I think very ganun naman din ako mag-reference before pa. But now lang kasi nagkaroon na ng YouTube. So, mas na-explain ko to all of you how the photos are created. So, I expect more of that. Panood na lang kayo na mga vlogs so, sa mga next. Kung ano pang ways kung paano mag-reference. Abangan nyo na lang. <laughs> Can you recommend some photography books and YouTubers to see? Ito, this is not a photography book. But, it's really good. For like photography beginners, sobrang helpful ng book na to. Actually, pinahiram ko to kay Liza before. Read this if you want to take great photographs. Actually, pinakap ko lang siya sa airport like one time. Sobrang helpful niya as in, like akala ko any-any book lang siya na parang for fun lang. On point yung mga tips niya on photography. Yung mga examples din niya like ng photos are by like renowned photographers din. So, ang ganda ng mga, uh, ng mga reference photos niya inside. Kahit sobrang liit lang yun na book. Oh. And then, there's another one na called uh, Read This 
if you want to take great photographs of people, I think meron din ako nato somewhere. These two books are good for like yung mga basics lang ng photography. Meron akong malaking book here. Papakita ko na lang yung photo niya. Photography book. Para siyang encyclopedia ng mga relevant na photographers throughout history. Review ng parang kumbaga yung history ng photographers through these different photographers. In general, like yung mga coffee table books ng mga anthology like if you like if you're a fan of a specific magazine na matagal na w has a book vanity fair has a coffee table book of portraits vogue maraming coffee table books if you're into specific photographers it's good to have like uh like yung mga books nila cuz parang doon mo malalaman kung paano nagdevelop din yung style nila ganyan and you can of course learn a thing or two just by looking at their body of work kung paano nila na-apply yung vision nila to different situations. Sa YouTubers naman, I don't really follow very many photography accounts. But, like mo sinasabi before, F-Stoppers is a good resource for like mga photography tips, ganyan. And Ian Hippolyte. Um, and his videos, puro fashion ginagawa niya are really really good and super informational especially with mga lighting techniques and everything those two are the best ones i could recommend how do you stay inspired to create oh my god palagi akong tinatanong nito inspiration parang mahirap siya to come by my mind has to be in a specific mindset para ma-inspire ako usually depends din sa ano sa subject ganyan kung nai-inspire ako kung ano yung babagay sa kanila ganyan and pag nai-excite ako dun sa subject syempre last year nung nag-quarantine ganyan dun dun marami akong time na inspire ako kaya ang dami kong um, creative shoots uh, medyo nahirapan din ako this year because um, ang dami ng work na commercial work na nakaka-drain din siya it's so hard to work now na na pandemic pa rin kasi kailangan kong sumigaw all the time kasi may mask kailangan kong isigaw lahat ng instructions ko para makikipag-usap lang ako and then sometimes required pa yung PPE super mainit ganyan so it's really draining physically and mentally to work now i really think pag inspired ako dun sa subject dumarating talaga yung yung inspiration or sometimes like when i see like a movie I like or like just like a scene somewhere I like or a song I like and then bigla lang na jog yung isip ko wala siyang formula walang standard formula on how to be inspired but just like comes I think a lot of you who are creative also can relate kasi parang minsan talaga wala <laughs> last question agad carry on D any message to all aspiring photographers? If you reached this part of the video, congratulations! Kasi ang haba na naman ang video na to. Um, thank you so much. The advice I always give to aspiring photographers is to work on finding your vision. Because I always say this, your vision is your ammunition. And dami dami mga ibang photographers kasi yung mga theories ng photography, maaaral mo naman lahat yan kahit online. Pare-pareha kayo ng alam essentially. But what will separate you from the rest, and kaya ganito yung YouTube channel ko. Sa YouTube channel ko, makikita niyo naman yung mga lighting setups. Kung hindi ko na siya tinuturo talaga, for me, yung important part is yung mga nasa simula ng videos ko. How I ideate yung mga references ko. Kaya sobrang heavy ng emphasis ko sa mga ganun eh, sa simula ng videos ko. I'm sure i-search nyo lang sa YouTube. Marami kayong ibang photographers na makikita na nagsishare ng mga lighting setups nila. Yung importante talaga is yung ideas nyo. How you conceptualize, how you reference things. Doon makikita yung vision nyo eh. And your vision is what will separate you from the other photographer beside you or yung mga 100 other photographers beside you na same din naman yung technical know-how. So, hindi talaga nagmamatter how good you are with lighting, kung memorize nyo ba lahat ng mga modifiers, yung mga values, kung gano'ng galing kayo mag-calculate ng values. Keep getting inspired. Um, see the beauty in whatever you like. And parang go with your gut, I think. Parang yun yung in my 12 years as a photographer, parang feeling ko yun talaga yung pinaka-important. Because now, napapansin ko, yung mga nire-reference ko ngayon, binabalik-balikan ko lang din yung mga dating feeling ko. Parang gusto ko talaga siya, pero feeling ko, ay, hindi naman uso, ganyan. So, kahit hindi siya uso, just go with your gut. Um, kung, kung yun talaga yung type mo, go with it. Kasi, yun ikaw eh. Kasi yun talaga yung nag-resonate sa'yo. So, that way, mas develop mo talaga kung ano yung vision mo. 
that's it for this episode. Napahaba na naman ng chikahan today. So, if you enjoyed this very long video, don't forget to comment down below if you have any more questions. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get updated on my next video, which is another Musings episode. Finally, kasi na-miss yung February. See you guys next week, and you take care, ha!